How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? I trust that everyone is enjoying the music. Warn you, buddy. You've stumbled upon a radio program that may make you uneasy, uncertain, perhaps a little angry. Right now, before we go anyplace else, I want you to go with me to a special place that I know. It's a museum, but it isn't an ordinary museum. It's a very abstract museum in which they show sound paintings if you can say that you show sound but I don't see why you can't but here we are in this corridor some of the most beautiful works of art are here here's one right here uh, this is by a, a very fine young artist here, let me turn it on. I never ever wanted something so badly that it possessed your body and your soul. Through the night and through the day. turn your attention to this work by um, an artist who is a World War I veteran. Actually, I, I don't feel that this for me says what he intended it to say, and yet there are those who, who listen to it and, and it says a great deal to them. Well, here, uh, I'll turn it on. and you. get to a point where only the the most uh, do-nothing, uninitiated, uh, inactive people are going to become our leaders because they'll have this clean slate, but it'll also make them the most shallow, boring, and least inspirational people. You know, we all have mistakes in our past, but since they're all recorded in computer databases right now, and someone can just dig it up and throw it in your face, that's the kind of uh, system we have to protect against. So, so we can really have, you know, a free willing society where people are free to speak their mind. And you'll see what I mean. You can see that that he uses limited color range. Of course, that's understandable. I'm glad that it's here, though. But uh, enough of that. Let's go on to the next uh, work that I want you to see. Now, this is a sound painting that is indicative of the neurotic uh, feeling of our time. The artist is very young, shows great promise, and I'm glad that uh, the work is exhibited here. 
Let me turn this painting on and... Just whenever it came up. <laughs> yeah, whenever it, we had the occasion to. <laughs> if was, we wanted to. <laughs> uh, you know, we did. And it was great. I think the best one I can ask for. Well put. Did the live through all the all the crap. You know, maybe music is the one thing that keeps you alive or something. You know, it's like you should probably thank uh, you know, I would thank Pete Townsend, I would uh, thank uh, Henry Rollins and Ian from Fugazi. I'd thank all these people for giving me, you know, something to live for, you know, uh, a, a reason. Because life can, you know, it, it, this modern world, it can be kind of crazy, kind of fucked up. Make you want to kill yourself. I relate to that, you know. Mm -hmm. But, because uh, of music, you know, I saved my soul. Again, well put. I, I think you can see my point. Uh, now, the artist that uh, did this, fortunately, is uh, under sedatives at the moment, and uh, we expect that his later work will be much calmer, and quieter and but we do like to give these young neurotic artists a chance and so I'm glad that the museum has been big about the whole thing as it were but but let's go on because uh, there's one work here that's been done by Janus Cunningham. Uh, makes a lot of money uh, actually doing these things. But now I'd like to turn your attention to this work by uh, an artist who is a World War I veteran. Actually, I, I don't feel that this for me says what he intended it to say. And yet there are those who, who listen to it and, and it says a great deal to them. Well, here. Now I'm gonna give you a, uh, a clear vista of the, the edge of uh, the civilized world. You see, it's like a game of leapfrog. These houses, you know, they just keep extending the town out further and further every year. Kind of weird uh, for the first person that moves into a community like this. How bad it is. But you know, it's an imaginary landscape, a place to raise your kids. Of course, nowadays, not everyone's having kids. That was what, with the end of the world coming up and all. I mean, uh, would you? No, no, not at all. No. Uh, this is a professor from another country actually but his work is revered here we have quite a few of his works but this particular one i want you to listen to very carefully because it has a an exquisite sense of rhythm this is a a young man who has six children and it's amazing to me that he can turn out this kind of work at home with the children around but he says that they help him. Or if you'll read it, Cunningham, it says, dedicated to my six children. Well, here, uh, I'll turn it on and you can hear it for yourself.
just beautiful. Taking in every chop, every wind shift, you have to be on. The slightest mistake, you're down. When you fall, you can hurt yourself really badly. And let me tell you, when you're going 43 knots and you fall, on the water, you just don't go in. You, you know what I'm saying? You do the dance. See what I mean? I'll close the door. It's the reason it's black. Here, uh, let me open up this door. It's just covered with beautiful colors. And we'll hear what's on the other side of this door. There's a very distinguished writer named Arthur Kessler, and uh, he, uh, after a lot of careful research and study and all that in, uh, in his life, he discovered that the human mind is broken up into three areas, three categories. First is humor. Second is science, which he calls discovery. And the third is art. Now, the one thing that really blew me out about that book was that the first rule of ego is humor. So in other words, when people get together, they're more apt to want to be funny, you know, out of instinct and ego than they are artistic or scientific, you know, like intellectual, you know? You know, it's nice when people, someone can make everybody laugh and feel comfortable, you know, and childlike, which is the, the most highly regarded pop musician in America, hands down. Everybody by that time had figured out who was writing it all. And who was arranging it and all. And who was arranging it all, you know. What, what year did In My Room come out? 65? Oh no, was it a little later than... Pe that was like the defining point for me. When I heard In My Room, I went, okay, I give up. You know, I can't do that, I'll never be able to do that. In my room. It's a very abstract museum in which they show sound paintings. If you can say that you show sound. It's history. I mean, it is, it is true. So, uh, you know. Praying for people. What'd you say? I can't hear you. It's called Busload of Faith. We're really nervous, but we love you all, man, because this is very groovy, man. Very groovy, man. This, this, is, this is something, man. This is, this is our generation, man. All you people, are, we're all together, man, and it's groovy. And dig yourselves, because it's really groovy. Divine order takes charge of my life today and every day. All things work together for good for me today. This is a new and wonderful day for me. There will never be another one like this one. I'm divinely guided all day long. And whatever I do is trust her. Play as well as you can. Go, team. Go. Give me an L. Give me an I. Give me a V. Give me an E. L-I-V-E. Live. Otherwise, you got nothing to talk about in the locker room. <laughs>